Storytime name. I've never posted here before, but I feel like I have to tell as many people as I can about what happened to me. I really feel like it might save a life. I work nights so I usually sleep during the day. I get home around 5 in the morning, and I'm usually in bed by 5.30, but on this day when I got home something felt off. I checked the whole house, locked all of the doors, and as I was locking the windows, I saw something that sent panic waves through my entire body. Right outside of my window were two huge shoe impressions, almost like someone was just standing there looking through my window. Something in my gut was telling me I needed to hurry up and lock everything i can't explain it but i felt like i was running out of time like something was coming then out of nowhere my doorbell rang i was so afraid i screamed and immediately regretted it now the person on the other side of the door knew for sure i was inside i tried to be quiet after that but it was too late i could hear a man saying something but i couldn't make out what he was saying i went closer to the door and i realized he was saying he was from a delivery service and i had a package remember it's five in the morning i had stuff delivered before but nothing ever came that early i figured if i just ignored him he would go away, but as I started to walk away from the door, I looked up, and what I saw made my heart stop, I had forgotten to close the curtain right next to the front door, I could see him, he could see me, and we made direct eye contact, he wasn't wearing a uniform, and he seemed sketchy, but I knew I was safe, because I was in sight, and he was outside, I was wrong, he held up a box, and I told him to just leave it at the door, of course he responded that he needed a signature, I just wanted him to leave so I tried telling him it was the wrong house since I didn't order anything, at this point, I know for a fact I'm in danger, but I'm still still trying to stay calm. I felt like going along with his fake delivery driver routine was keeping him in character. But if I showed even for a second that I knew he was a monster, that's what he would be. He kept insisting it was the right house. So I asked a question that sent the entire situation into chaos. As calmly as I could I asked him what was the name on the package. I watched his face change into a look of deep disgust and anger. And I was terrified. I thought I couldn't be more afraid. But then he looked past me and smiled. It was a huge happy grin. And before I turned to see what he was looking at I knew. I hadn't finished closing and locking all of the windows. I ran as fast as I could to get to the open windows before he could. I barely made it but I was able to keep him out. We stood there staring at each other and I thought it was over. But now I think it might be the beginning. He just stared at me with excitement. Through the window he asked me if I still wanted to know who the package was for. Before I could respond he told me it was for Kayla. And I froze because that's my name. Story time started. I used to work in a pretty big and popular department store. I would probably still be working there if it weren't for the worst day of my life. I was at work, and it was pretty much a normal day, until the end. I was getting a little nervous because the rule was you couldn't leave your section until the person taking your spot got there. If they never showed up, then management expected you to stay. I was getting really worried because I only had 30 minutes left in my shift and the guy Jim, who was supposed to take over for me wasn't there yet, even though his shift should have started an hour before. At the time all I wanted was to see his face so I could go home, but now I wish he never would have shown up. About 20 minutes before I was supposed to leave I could see Jim walking over to our section. He was usually pretty happy and upbeat, but even from far away I could tell something was wrong. When he finally made it over to me I froze. He looked like a zombie. I mean he was there, and he was normal but it was almost like he was looking through everything. I didn't have much time left so I thought I could just keep my distance and wait it out. I was on the other side of some shelves the first time I heard it. Jim was mumbling something. I couldn't really hear what it was but I knew he was just repeating the same thing over and over again. It was kind of to a rhythm so I thought it was a song. It turns out it was a warning. I managed to stay out of Jim's way for the last 10 minutes of my shift, but I still couldn't shake the feeling that I needed to figure out what he was mumbling, so I decided to go over and say bye before I left. It's not something I would've usually done, but I just wanted to try and figure out what he was mumbling one more time. As I walked up to Jim, I could hear him mumbling still, and I almost figured out what he was saying. Sometimes I think if I would have figured it out earlier I might have been able to stop it, but I didn't, and I couldn't. When I said bye to Jim he looked at me like I solved some lifelong puzzle he had been working on. Then he asked if I wouldn't mind watching our section for two more minutes so he could use the bathroom. My instinct was telling me to say no, it was telling me to get out of there as fast as I could, but I didn't listen. I knew Jim was having a bad day, and I wanted to help so I agreed. Jim walked away, and I stood there desperately trying to figure out what he had been mumbling. After about a minute, a sickeningly upbeat song, repeating Run Rabbit Run started playing over the store's intercom system, and that's when it hit me, what Jim had been mumbling since he got there. It was that, Run Rabbit Run. In my gut I knew it, I knew we were all in danger. I tried to run to make it to a manager and warn them, but I was too late. The screaming started. 
Storytime wears. This happened about a week ago, and I'm still pretty shaken up. I 13 female take the bus to and from school. My bus stop is probably three blocks from my house, but it's easier if I just cut through my neighbor's yards. No one knows I do this except for a couple of my friends, my parents, and my neighbors of course. Honestly, that's what makes this whole thing so terrifying. The person that did this to me is most likely someone I love, or worse. I have a feeling I know who it was but I guess I don't want to believe it. The day this all happened I was supposed to hang out with my best friend Mila. I asked asked my parents, she asked hers, and everything was a go. It wasn't until right before dismissal that Mila told me she couldn't come over. I was super confused because we had planned to hang out almost a week before, and she didn't really tell me why. She just said that her dad texted her and said she needed to come straight home. It kind of sounded like an emergency so, even though I was annoyed, I didn't make a big deal out of it. I got on the bus and tried to get over it. While I was sitting there, I couldn't let go of the feeling that something was wrong. I kept telling myself I was just worried about Mila, but I knew that wasn't it. The feeling got even stronger the closer I got to my stop. Then when it was finally time for me to get off of the bus I didn't want to, I had this completely unnecessary fear of getting off at my stop. I asked the bus driver if I could call my mom before I got off, and she said it was fine. Usually my mom makes sure she isn't busy when it's around the time I get home, but since she thought I'd be with Mila my phone call went straight to voicemail. I was out of options so even though I felt like I was making the biggest mistake of my life, I got off the bus. I wanted to get home as fast as I could so I took the shortcut through my neighbor's yard. I never realized how many places there were for people to hide. I did my best to avoid those areas, and I did. But once I could see my house, I completely let my guard down. I remember walking up to the edge of my neighbor's fence, and thinking, that's where they're hiding. Whoever is waiting to jump out and grab me, that's where they are. I literally laughed out loud, because I thought I was just being paranoid. The thing is I refused to turn around, and look back at the fence to see if someone was hiding there. It was almost like I believed if I didn't see them, then they couldn't see me. I should have looked because now I don't think I'll ever know. I was a couple steps from my yard, when I heard the footsteps behind me, and I knew, they were moving way too fast to be friendly. I tried to decide if I should run, or turn around, and that's all the person behind me needed. Before I knew it I couldn't breathe, and my feet weren't touching the ground anymore. Struggling seemed pointless, and I started to accept what was happening. I felt something pop, and my feet were on the ground again. This time I didn't think about it. I just ran. I didn't turn around, until I got inside my house, and closed the door behind me. But there was no one there. I knew I wasn't crazy, because I could see the beads from my necklace at the edge of my backyard, and there was the smell. I didn't know exactly what it was but I knew what it reminded me of. Cologne, the one that Mila's dad wears. Storytime animals, have you ever been in a situation and you knew the exact moment your life was in danger? A couple of years ago that was me. I basically ended up running for my life, and I still haven't completely forgiven myself for letting it happen. I was a freshman in college, the first of my family to ever go so I had no idea what to expect. I didn't want to stay in my hometown so I went to a college five hours away. It was a regular community college. Nothing special but not too far away there was a university where all the rich kids went. Since the two schools were so close together sometimes we would find ourselves in the same places. Well one day, I went to the local pizza place and I ran into this guy. I could tell right away he was from the other school, so I did my best to avoid him. I ordered my pizza picked a table the furthest away and tried to mind my business. I wasn't even paying attention when out of nowhere, 